Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, nice to see you all again. Hope you're doing well. So, inshallah, let's do our dua. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yastirli amri wa halul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. And let's take a few seconds to purify our intention. All right. So let's begin with the recap of what we did last time. Let me share my screen. Okay. So we did the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Before that, we did the creation plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, story of Adam and Hawa. We found out what the plan of this world and the universe is, especially for us. And then uh, Yusuf alayhi salam story, Ahsan al-Qasas, was a beautiful example of a life of righteousness and truthfulness. So we learned that life brings us its ups and downs. My best advice is that it is very helpful not to label events as good or bad. Only Allah knows what is good for us and what is bad for us. So inshallah, labeling right that yusuf alayhi salam had a good life right alhamdulillah in the end everything turned out to be good but if we start labeling life events that his brothers were very bad and then he they threw him in the well that was so bad what a terrible life right what a terrible childhood if we stop labeling things like this it will really help us a lot right i'm not saying it's wrong to label what I'm saying is it will be more helpful for you to navigate through the life if you don't label things. I hope you understand what I mean, okay? Inshallah. Because Allah knows what is good for us and what is bad for us. And, go, and to go through our life with all its difficulties, ups and downs, we need patience, sabr, perseverance, mustaqil mizaji. And then, of course, this was also a powerful story of how valuable truth is and how important it is for us to be known as truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. So uh, lesson three, we will be talking about uh, an overview of Surah Kahf and the lessons that we learn from it are very useful in saving us from being away from the reality of life. So let's look at these terms. Deception means dhoka, lies, jhoot, twisting, karna, tod maror ke bayan karna, mixing truth with lies. Kisi cheez ko mashkuk bana dena. Such bol rahe hain, lekin usme ek do aisi baate dal di, ki wo jhoot lagne lage. Speaking without knowledge, right? Jahalat, ilm ke bagayar baat karna, gap marna, too much mazak karna, cheezon ka. Okay, so inshallah, knowing all these definitions, now the question is that what is meant by the jal? The jal actually means all of the above definitions. So, uh, inshallah, please uh, make a note of these. And uh, my question again is, if all of this is the jal, isn't this happening around us every day of our lives, right? We have to be more careful that each one of us are not doing all of these things. So, are you still waiting for the one-eyed monster dajjal, right? The dajjal, there is a... Ek ankhwala. Are we still waiting for him? Okay. It is true. It is mentioned in the hadith, the description of the jal, and that is true. But please remember one thing: the jal has many tricks to play on us. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will be forty lying the jals, meaning many the jals who will be making, um, you know, who will be doing deception, lies, twisting, magic, black magic, fortune telling, right? All of these things they'll be 
doing all these tricks upon us. So we don't have to wait for a particular Dajjal because what if he does not come in my lifespan, right? So looking at one Dajjal, you may miss out on the real Dajjals that we are facing in today's world. What is the way of protecting ourselves from the Dajjal? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have given us that formula. Read Surah Kahaf first or last 10 ayahs every Friday. That's the minimum you can do. And if you can read the whole, it is very good. We also need to understand the meaning and the message in Surah Kahaf. It doesn't mean that we just recite it and not think. Because Allah is telling you something about saving yourself from the job. To explain further, uh, you need to protect yourself from the jal. And I will give you an example that we are all facing the coronavirus pandemic, right? And if I ask you to protect yourself from coronavirus pandemic, please go find out every germ or virus and kill them. Is that reasonable to ask? Are you able to do such a command? No. So it is more reasonable to ask that be careful for yourself, right? Whatever you have, uh, wash your hands, wear a mask. If there is a vaccine available, get that vaccine. Can you do it? Yes, Alhamdulillah, right? So please remember, do your duty to protect yourself and your family from the job. Now, um, uh, this Surah Kahaf has very powerful four main stories, story of the people of the cave. They were tested with Iman. The man with a, uh, uh, two men, and one of them had two gardens. So that is the story of the test of the wealth. Musa and Khazar salam. That is the test of knowledge. Zulkarnain, who was a king, powerful king, test of power. So the Jal is going to test us in all of these areas, or maybe one, maybe two, but inshallah, Surah Kahaf gives us an insight how to protect ourselves from these kind of tests and trials when they come. Okay, so looking at the story of the people of the cave, First ayah of Surah Kahaf, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. All praise is due to Allah who has sent down to his servant the book and has not placed therein any crookedness. Ayuwaja, again, crookedness. Remember we talked about in the definitions, making the deen crooked is also a trick of the Dajjal. And Allah says, warning of a severe punishment for those who do this crookedness. And good news for the believers who do righteous deeds, right? We'll get a reward. Inshallah, may we be among the believers. And then uh, ayah number four says, the biggest awaj, the biggest crookedness is Allah has a child. Allah says, these people have no knowledge. So speaking without knowledge is a lie, right? Lying about Allah and the Quran is again one of the biggest tricks of the shaitan and the jal. So inshallah, we have to save ourselves from it. So the story of these people is like, uh, the background is that they live in a city and they are believers in one Allah and a ruler comes who tries to introduce paganism or idolatry, multiple God like concept. And these people say, we have to save ourselves from this situation. We will not be forced to give up our deen or say something that is not uh, according to what we believe. They left the town. They went to a nearby place where they found a cave. They rested there and Allah made them sleep for a very long time, 300 plus nine years. That is from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is all mentioned when you read the um, tafsir of Surah Kahaf. The thing is that these people, what lessons do we learn, right? So number one, we will be tested with Iman. Our Iman can be in danger if we have no knowledge. So inshallah, stick to the knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. 
learn from the right teachers who can teach you exactly what you need to know. Uh, watch out for crookedness. We, we cannot do that. And these people, the story of these people, yes, they left their town, but sometimes it's very difficult for people to leave this town. This story is even before the time of Rasulullah. They did not need passport, right? Visas, and there were no borders like they could not cross. So that was their story. They did the best that they could. We need to do the best that we can do in our own times. Remember that uh, uh, planning for a journey, if, you, if somebody needs to leave town, right, for any reasons like saving their iman, they need to understand that it is from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he prepared for the journey or the migration or the hijra to Medina. He did not just leave one day. So inshallah, we have that best example of our prophet that if we need to make any big changes, the best thing is to follow the example of our prophet. <clears throat> the next story is about the people who had two gardens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in Surah Kahab, Ayat 32, that Allah gives an example of two men. One of them, Allah had given two gardens of grapes surrounded by date palms and between them, a lot of green crops were growing. So of course, sound like a very nice, beautiful picture. This guy became out of touch of reality. And he says to his friend that I am greater than you in wealth and in numbers of people. So he had more wealth, of course. And then he had more sons or men working for him. And he became very proud of it, right? So he said, I do not think that this garden will ever perish. So he also had another deception, dhoka, that this garden is going to stay like this forever. And then he said, I do not think the hour will ever come, hour meaning the day of judgment. And he said, if indeed I am back, brought back to my Lord, I will find better than this, what I have been given here. So again, deception after deception after deception. Number one, I'm better than you in wealth. Wealth is not the criteria who is better in the eyes of Allah. Only taqwa and iman is, we know that. He says, I think the garden will never perish. This is not the creation plan of Allah. Everything is time limited. And uh, uh, this dunya, our life, our youth, it's all time limited. It's going to perish. And then again, I do not think uh, the day of judgment will come. There is another big, big deception. For people who think day of judgment will not come, they are actually thinking that we are not answerable to God. Okay, so these are all extremely, extremely crookedness of examples of crookedness. Inshallah, may Allah save us from this. What happened with this guy now that one day, the next day actually, he comes to visit his garden and he finds that the garden is destroyed. For a moment he thought, maybe I'm not in the right place. Maybe this is not my land, but unfortunately it was. And he became really upset. He realized that he had done a great mistake by thinking all those things that we spoke about. And the ayah continues to say, he said, I wish I had not ascribed partners with my Lord, right? Yaqulu ya laytani lam ushrik birabbi ahada. So all these were the deceptions of shaitan and in his own deception, in his own mind, he was doing shirk with Allah. And we know shirk done knowingly is not forgiven by Allah. So he was ascribing that his garden is going to live forever and ever living is only the sifat or the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is written in the Quran that he said, I'm doing shirk. 
So may Allah save us from this kind of behavior. And now all the men and the wealth that he was talking about, he was so proud of, nothing could help him against Allah. So if we have comfort in our lives and we start forgetting Allah, that's another deception because Allah can turn things around in a moment. And this is what the example of these people of the uh, garden tells us about. So the next story is the story of Musa and Hidr alayhi salam. It's a very interesting story. Musa alayhi salam was the um, uh, prophet of Allah, the messenger. And uh, it is said that one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, uh, who do you think is the most knowledgeable Musa uh, on this earth right now? He said, I am because I am Allah's prophet and Allah is the one who conveys knowledge to me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa alayhi salam to go to a certain place and there he will find someone. And Musa alayhi salam's attitude, he was extremely obedient. He set forth and he said, I will keep walking in search of that knowledge, right? He went there, he found uh, Khizr alayhi salam. And the whole detail is in the Surah Kahaf, where they uh, did, uh, Khizr alayhi salam did a few actions that did not seem right. Like the first one was that he made a hole in the boat of a poor fisherman. And Musa alayhi salam asked him, like, why did you do it? Musa alayhi salam had already asked him, please be quiet. So that is one um, prerequisite or something that is needed to learn knowledge, that we have to be quiet, listen first to the teacher before we start questioning. So um, Khizar alayhi salam said, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I will not ask and let's go together. So there were a few more things that they did together. And Musa alayhi salam was an inquisitive person. He wanted to learn. It's good to ask questions at the right time. And um, Musa alayhi salam um, said something again. And uh, Khizr alayhi salam said, I don't blame you for asking questions because you did not know about it. But at the same time, we made a deal that if you ask more questions before I allow you to, then we are going to part. So they both parted. And before they parted, Khizr alayhi salam taught him that something may seem on the outside that like I was making a hole in the boat of the uh, poor fisherman, but actually I was trying to protect his boat from the king who was taking away the good boats without any defect. And then they talked about um, other things the same way. For us, the lesson is, number one, be eager to learn knowledge from the right people, right? From the right teachers. Number two, we have to be patient to learn because your teacher can't just do a program download and give you all that knowledge. There are steps that you need to be patient, learning, perseverance to learn knowledge. And then um, Khizr alayhi salam did not blame Musa alayhi salam for asking questions because he said, yeah, if you don't know something, it is actually, how can you be patient over that matter, right? If you don't know anything, you need to find out about knowledge. So that is encouraging students to find out more about things that we are learning. Uh, in the end, what we can take from it that this was the test of knowledge. Musa alayhi salam, though he was the prophet of Allah and subhanallah, Allah sends wahi right, uh, through angel Jibreel uh, alayhi salam to him. What we need to learn is that you may be knowledgeable, very knowledgeable, but at the same time, we cannot think that I am the most knowledgeable, I'm the most learned person, right? So inshallah, there always be somebody above us, which is a good feeling that makes all humans equal. We are learners and we keep learning till the last day of our lives, inshallah. Number second point, that is third probably, right? Extremely powerful. That Khizr alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam together were demonstrating to us what I had touched in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Things may seem good or bad, but the real meaning is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So like I mentioned in the beginning of this lesson, to label things that, you know, this person is good, this person is bad, this situation is good, this is good, you know, um, it, it doesn't help. We don't have that knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, right? So if the Prophet of Allah was not talking in those terms of being, you know, like if, if he, he was taught through Khizr alayhi salam, then look at us guys. We need to learn, be humble, okay, inshallah. So that is the amazing um, uh, lessons from the story of the Musa and Khizr that we must trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he has a plan for us it's going to be good if we just follow patience perseverance iman and good deeds alhamdulillah okay so let's do a recap of what we did today extremely important lessons don't wait <coughs> looking sitting and waiting for a Dajjal to come that you will be able to recognize is not going to happen, my dear children, because Dajjal, Dajjal is supposed to be deception. And he's all around us. But remember, Dajjal aside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful, right? Allah is controlling these Dajjals and Shayateen. Allah is giving them permission to do their tricks and job. Allah is allowing us to take Allah's help and do our job. So please, Find out what we need to do, and inshallah, we will be successful. Uh, also, um, the people of the cave were tested with Iman. And uh, remember, Iman through knowledge of Quran and Sunnah, we have to learn that. Then stay in good company. Um, if you do not find good company, talking about right now, right? If you don't have, then Please, it's better to stay alone than being with bad friends. And Alhamdulillah, keep your duty to your family. They are your friends and they will be always with you. Then staying away from shirk and kufr. And you can read more, uh, inshallah, what is happening in terms of kufr and shirk in the story of the people of the gardens. And also remember that everything is time limited. Do your part, right? You come on the stage, do your part and exit. So, Alhamdulillah, that's the plan of Allah. We should be comfortable with it and do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do through the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. About the story of Musa alayhi salam, he was the prophet of Allah. He was still willing to learn. It was okay to ask questions at the right. It is okay to ask questions at the right time. And also remember that in the plan of the whole universe, the plan for us, our lives. Allah means good for us. Allah has a good plan for us. So inshallah, story goes up and down. Don't try to label things. Otherwise, um, it does not help us, okay? Mentally and emotionally also, it does not help us. That is it. Inshallah, the lecture is over. And now your assignment is that write in your own words the advice you will give people on saving oneself from the job. Okay, I will send this in written also. Write in your own words advice that you will give people on saving oneself from the job. I will send a little uh, note to your teacher and inshallah, please work on it. Thank you so much for being with me today. See you in another lecture. And if you have any questions, try to send them to me, to your teacher, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.